What's going on, guys? Welcome to another episode of Tasty Tuesday on Tasty Loot Gaming, the show where we talk about gaming news. My name is Seth, and a couple quick reminders to download and play Sims 4 and Bioshock Collection. Both offer for free on PlayStation Plus. Make sure to download those, play those, come back at the end of the month for Plus Club. Let us know what we thought of those games. We'll let you know what we thought of them. And our game of the month randomly picked is Monster Hunter World. Uh, make sure to play that, come back at the end of the month for Game of the Month as well. Uh, we have a Discord link down below. You can talk to us anytime, all time, and we're on iTunes, Spotify, and other podcast platforms if you prefer to listen to us. And if you comment down below, which you definitely should, make sure to type in hashtag AskTLG if you'd like us to consider your comment being shown on our comment replying segment on Tastecast every weekend. Make sure to type that in if you want us to talk about it on the show. All right, Tasty Tuesday, two bits of news. So let's just jump in into it uh first bit of news is a bit of cautionary news something that has affected me as well and we'll get into that which is uh crippling server issues are getting in the way of wolson lords of mayhem's big launch this is via pc gamer and apparently the game's launch has been kind of shitty uh when it comes to uh the update that came out that allowed multiplayer to happen so we're going to go through the original story and then we'll go into the updates to the story uh all right so another day another online game launch hampered by widespread server issues it's a story as old as time and this version involves wolson lords of mayhem a gorgeous action rpg that graduated out of steam early access today though wolson has been dominating steam's best sellers list all week today's full launch is proving enormously successful with a current peak of over 60,000 players a number that keeps on climbing it's quite a bit. Sadly, all that popularity seems to be crippling Wilson's online servers. A few hours after launch, the developers at Wilson Studio began acknowledging collect or connectivity issues on Twitter, and there doesn't uh, appear to be any end in sight. Uh, in quotes, it says, we're still working on the server issues, and we're currently in the process of increasing the amount of information processed on the database uh, per second. Uh, the latest update reads, we still have no ETA to provide for the moment, but we'll keep you updated. If you try playing the game right now, don't expect a smooth ride. I was able to create a new character and jump online, but was booted out to the main menu in the middle of an early boss fight due to a network error and haven't been able to get back in the game since. It's frustrating because Wilson does have an offline mode, but it requires making a wholly separate character, and there's no way to transfer an on offline character uh, to online. You either have to commit to playing alone or wrestle with unpredictable servers. Uh, judging by Wilson's subreddit, it's clear I'm not the only one struggling with these issues. Still, this kind of thing is to be expected with an online game, especially ones made by small indie studios, which is a completely fair point. Uh, Wilson's developers only number around a dozen, and I can't imagine how much work it is to keep up with how popular the game has become. Kickstarted for 400000 back uh, $400,000 back in 2015. Wilson, then called Umbra, was originally designed. I, I feel like I remember a game called Umbra a while ago, so that's kind of interesting. It was originally designed to be much more open world. Over the course of the past five years, it has changed into a much different game, which was met with resentment from some of its Kickstarter backers. Over the past year, though, uh, that perception of Wilson improved dramatically as the pieces started to come together, forming a kind of Warhammer meets Path of Exile action RPG, which is interesting because on Tasty Cast, which we talked about uh, my experience with Wilson, so make sure to check that out if you missed that. Um, I talked about how it does kind of have a Warhammer feeling to it, but definitely does pull from Path of Exile, so it's interesting. Pretty much everyone's on, on the same page when it comes to that. Um, cause it's something that, you know, I, I, I noticed specifically with some of the armor types very much reminded me of Warhammer, uh, and today's servers, uh, issues aside, people really seem to love where the game is now. Uh, all of that is to say that Wolson looks really cool, but if you're going to buy it today, don't expect to be able to play it unless you're okay with committing to offline mode. Uh, yeah, and then we got a couple updates real quick. Wilson's developers have given another update recently. Servers and server capacities are currently being deployed and will be fully functional in a few hours. Uh, we're also preparing a hotfix for progression reset issues. We will push that hotfix in a few hours as well, which was on the 13th uh, of this month. And then on the 16th, two days ago, uh, they said... In a full statement posted on Steam, Wilson Studio has explained a bit more detail about the reasons for the game server's extended downtime. In quotes, it says, after applying a hotfix last Friday, users reported that their characters were missing, their stash is emptied, and their endgame progression wiped. 
The servers were shut down to prevent this issue from affecting a large amount of players while it was fixed. The statement continues, unfortunately other complications appeared in the process and led us to continuously push back the ETAs we provided for the resolution of the situation. And we're still working hard to fix these issues and make sure that the game works properly online, which can still take some time. There is no ETA on the servers returning. Wilson Studios has posted updates every day since the servers went down. Now, uh, this is news in the sense that I wanted to warn you guys if you are picking up Wilson. I've been talking about it on the show. There's been people in the community showing interest in picking it up, people who have picked it up. I know Chris recently was talking about maybe picking it up. So uh, I feel it's important to let you know that there are issues with this game currently. Uh, now, so <laughs> I read this. I've been hearing this stuff, and I'm like, oh, shit. What about my character? I logged into the game, and not only do I not have an online character, which makes sense, I never played the game online, I don't have an offline character anymore either. Now, that does suck, uh, and I don't know if I'm going to get him back or not. Luckily, I was only about six hours into the game, four or six hours. I'd played it for a little bit, but not for a game like this, not that long. So... Uh, I have lost my character. We'll see if I get him back. I'll let you guys know if I do. But, um, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't have him anymore. It sucks, but uh, luckily I, I wasn't that far into it. So uh, this, overall, in my opinion, is, is not good. It's not good um, uh, for any game to have these kind of issues uh, when it launches. This is not good at all. But it does seem uh, that the game is still selling very well. But I would hate to see this situation affect the game negatively. Um, it is a smaller team working on this, so it makes sense that there would be issues. Hopefully they can resolve them quickly. Um, but uh, this is a pretty big deal, specifically that you're losing progress, uh, end game uh, progression, uh, the stuff in your stash. I mean, if I was like 20 hours, 40 hours, 60 hours into this game, this would be pretty devastating to me. It would be really shitty. Um, Obviously, things restart, but that's still time invested, time lost, um, which would really kind of blow. So I feel bad for anybody who has played this game already. Um, you know, you're playing in early access. There's no guarantee, but, you know, it's still something that you would hope would have been uh, uh, taken care of beforehand, before this situation even happened. Um, so it's complicated. Uh, but yeah, I just wanted to warn you guys that this is a thing that's happening if you are thinking about picking up Wilson, which is a game I have recommended and still would recommend uh, just letting you know going into it that there is problems happening right now after launch. When I picked it up, there was no online yet. They were saying they're going to add that later. I think they added that the 13th or the 14th. I don't remember. Um, and so I haven't played since then a whole lot. I did play offline a little bit. Um, but I have not tried the online yet, so, uh, but yeah, since then, uh, all this shit's been happening, so, and that coincides with the launch of this game, so it, it, it's unfortunate, but I wanted you guys to know this, and, uh, yeah, I recommend the game, though, um, just go into it safely, it's fun, I like it, it looks great, has some really cool ideas, reminds me a lot of Path of Exile in some ways, specifically the skill tree is kind of similar, except for it's, it rotates on the outside, but, um, uh, yeah, really interesting stuff, uh, gameplay-wise, not not problems-wise. Um, but yeah, let me know in the comments. Uh, have you played Wilson? Are you thinking about picking up Wilson? Does this change your opinion on the game? Were you one of the people who lost progress in the game? Uh, what did you lose if you did? I lost my fucking character. He's gone, so I just have to restart, I guess. Maybe I'll wait to make sure uh, everything's, you know working correctly before i do that or maybe i'll just jump in and take the risk again i don't know i'd like to play this game some more um and yeah are you going to pick this game up you're not going to pick this pick this game up are you specifically not going to pick this game up because of these problems let me know everything you're thinking about uh wilson in the comments below second bit of news is a bit of need for speed news now Need for Speed Heat just came out, and it got pretty good reviews, as far as I know. People I know recommended it to me. People within the community said they liked it. Um, but apparently, 
EA is shifting gears, uh, all pun intended. Uh, so according to GameSpot, uh, Need for Speed development is moving back to Criterion as Ghost Games downsizes. Uh, in quotes, it says the Criterion team is going to take Need for Speed into the next generation. It's very interesting. Uh, all right, so jumping in, after eight years away, EA is returning to Need for Speed franchise to burnout developer Criterion Games. Current franchise leader Ghost Games is set to become EA Gothenburg, once again, uh, it's interesting that they were that they went to the Ghost Games, going back to Gothenburg. They're really they're really shuffling shit around EA lately. Ghost Games has been home of Need for Speed for the last four games in the series, developing 2013's Need for Speed Rivals, 2015 Need for Speed Reboot, 2017's Need for Speed Payback, and last year's Need for Speed Heat. Which sounds to me that even in those four games. They were trying to figure out where to take Need for Speed. Specifically, they made Rivals, then they tried to reboot the series, made Payback, and then they made Heat. Uh, while Payback marked a low point for the series, uh, Ghost Games was getting the Street Racer back on track with Heat earning a 7 out of 10 in GameSpot's review. So see, that's the interesting thing, is I thought most people uh, were pretty happy with it. So... Apparently not enough. Uh, now the series returns to Criterion, the studio most well known for creating the Burnout series and developers 2010 uh, Need for Speed Hot Pursuit and 2012's Need for Speed Most Wanted. Both of those games I've heard good things about as well. The UK based studio downsized in 2013 with many employees moving to Ghost Games. Interesting that they man okay uh, since then criterion has taken on a supporting role helping dice on star wars battlefront battlefront 2 and battlefield 5 which kind of sucks that they they people who made burnout got put onto those fucking projects and that was ea trying to save those fucking games uh, in quotes, it says, with a strong history and passion for racing games and vision for what we can create, the Criterion team is going to take Need for Speed into the next generation, EA said in a statement uh, to gamesindustry.biz. Uh, all this leaves Ghost Games to refocus as the studio becomes an engineering hub supporting development across EA's other projects. The engineering expertise in our Gothenburg team, some of whom are our architects of the Frostbite engine, is vital to a number of our ongoing projects, and they would remain in that location. It almost sounds like they're switching places with the two, which is so revealing. The publisher is looking to transfer the creative team of Ghost Games to positions at Criterion and other studios within the organization, but 30 roles still remain at risk. Outside of engineers uh, and those we plan to transfer to other positions, there would be 30 additional staff in Gothenburg, and we would hope to place as many of them as possible into other roles in the company. Uh, that sounds sketchy as fuck. One of the key reasons for the change comes down to location. Despite our best efforts to establish an independent development group in Gothenburg over several years, it's become clear that the breadth of talent we need to maintain a full AAA studio is just not available to us there, he explained. Criterion is based uh, in Guildford, uh, which is one of the biggest hubs for the UK's game development scene. Much like the beginning of the generation, the Need for Speed series is moving house as the next gen draws near. Criterion is a very different studio to the one that developed Most Wanted, with studio founders Alex Ward and Fiona Sperry departing in 2014. Which is always the case. Every time these names that like were were gone for a while come back, they're never the same team completely. Like the creative minds typically are gone, and someone else kind of took over for them. Nevertheless, it's still exciting to see the studio back making a game that's wholly its own. Not to mention the first Need for Speed game for PlayStation Five and Xbox Series X. All right, this is interesting. So we talked about in Taste of Cast recently that. Uh, EA seems to be kind of shuffling things around specifically with Respawn and their success in their games and uh, my assumed power that Respawn's going to have and Vincent Pell is going to have within the company because of their success and maybe potentially uh, making EA second guess their opinion that online games is the way to go and single player games are dead essentially. There's more to it but everybody's heard the quote a million times and now we're hearing that uh, they're once switched uh, team to go work on and support Star Wars Battlefront, Battlefront 2, and Battlefield 5 is now coming back to work on Need for Speed, and the guys who work on that are going to go do something else. Um, so yeah, this just screams to me that EA is really rethinking everything. They're rebalancing everything. We're going to see similar with Bioware and Anthem. 
Um, so do I think this is good? Um, possibly. Uh, it shows that things aren't working for EA the way that they've been doing it, and they have to do something different. Now, is that going to make something good out of all this? I don't know, but uh, it's changing things up, and the possibility is there now because what was happening before just wasn't working for them and for us. Um, so uh, I think I'm going to view this optimistically. Uh, I do like the idea of the guys who worked on Burnout coming back to make a Need for Speed. Um, not only just because I like Burnout, but uh, what was happening with Need for Speed has not been getting a whole lot of praise outside of the most recent game, which does suck that they made something people liked and now they're gone. But we are going to get something completely different now. we got a whole new team working on new Need for Speed, so we are going to get something different, maybe something fresh, maybe something to change things up a bit and make the series exciting again. That's exciting to me. Um, with the pedigree of people who possibly worked on the prior burnouts as well maybe we'll get something that's similar to burnout in the sense of the high octane racing and the crashing uh, aspect that burnout was famous for uh, that is one thing that i look at a lot of triple a games now and i'm like where's the fucking there's all these indie companies making these crumple physic type racing games or destruction derby games like why is a triple a company not doing this kind of shit uh, so maybe you'll see a return to that uh, from the people who worked on Burnout. Um, but yeah, like I said, uh, prior games that they've made uh, for the Need for Speed series, I've heard from people are well-received. I followed the series a while ago, so I don't really have a whole lot of excitement for Need for Speed anymore. But this makes me interested again. So um, as for the job loss potentially happening, that does suck, of course. It sounds like they're readjusting everything, reallocating people around, moving them around. And uh, yeah, the 30 people up in the air uh possibly getting you know put into places i hope they all can get into something um but it does sound like uh with the with the team the ghost games team they said there's people who are architects of frostbite engine that are part of that team so i feel like they're gonna get allocated into supporting games that already exist possibly uh, maybe their insight to the engine can help make games that already exist better, um, which would make sense to me. Um, but all in all, I do think uh, this is transparent, and it's showing that there's a shift happening in EA that's very interesting. I think possibly it's going to be a good thing, um, and uh, I'm very, very curious and interested to see where this goes. Uh, and I hope the guys who made fucking Burnout make an awesome Need for Speed, like... I, I I think they're gonna I think they're gonna do a better job. I have no reason to believe that so far, um, outside of their prior games. But uh, I just I have a good feeling. But let me know in the comments what do you guys think about uh, Criterion coming back after eight years to work on Need for Speed, even though some of the people from the original team are gone. Do you think they're gonna nail it? Do you think they're not gonna nail it? Did you like Need for Speed Heat? Are you upset that you're not gonna be getting another one of those from, from the same team? Possibly they'll make a Heat two, and it's gonna be through Criterion. I don't think I'll be the case though. What would you like to see from uh, Need for Speed? What do you think would uh, make it interesting? And uh, what would you like to see Criterion do? What would you like to see uh, the guys uh, or the people from Ghost Games moving back into a more supportive role um, do? And uh, what do you think about the future of EA? What do you think about uh, what's happening with Anthem recently? What's happening with Respawn? Vince Sampella moving over to a whole new development team uh, while still coaching Respawn? Uh, the three projects that they've been working on uh, and yeah everything that's uh, happening at EA recently is uh, very interesting I'd love to know what you have to say about it in the comments below but that's gonna do it for this episode of Tasty Tuesday on Tasty Lou Gaming so always thank you for watching make sure to like and subscribe if you enjoy this episode make sure to check out our other episodes check us out on Tumblr, Twitter, Facebook at Tasty Lou Gaming check out my streams links down below I'm on everything pick your poison you can watch me anywhere even here on YouTube, which is super easy. You're already here already. Uh, we have a Discord link down below. You can talk to us anytime, all time. We're on iTunes, Spotify, and the podcast platforms. If you prefer to listen to us, holy shit. And, uh, yeah, type in uh, hashtag STLG if you have something you want to hear us talk about on the show. Tasty cast. Uh, you got a question for us. You got a comment that you want us to read. Hashtag ask TLG. Uh, but yeah, my name's Seth. Until the next episode, which will be something this week, have a good week, guys, and take it easy.